Welcome to Total Meltdown, the official podcast of Pwn.com, focusing on the gaming world and pretty much anything we feel like discussing. This is the first official episode introducing myself, G Nitro, and the only person I've ever met that wants to rock a lobster, my co-host, Clover. Hey, everybody. (laughs) All right, so this is going to be the podcast for the Pwn.com, like I said in the introduction, basically dealing with the site. We're going to be talking about anything and everything. Tonight's topics are pwn.com itself, um, music and commercials and other promotional activities for video games, rhythm games and their effects, uh, video game processing, and we're going to finish the show with the, our most anticipated games of 2008. Which I think is going to be <laughs> <laughs> Which I think we all know the answer to. <laughs> Hell <Health>, Yeah. <laughs> At least some of the you older hardcore gamers, at least. <laughs> oh, yeah. The people who have been like me who have been waiting for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's kick it off talking about Pwn.com. G Nitro, you want to you wanna start it off? All right, I'm um, basically going to say how I found the site. Um, don't remember how I saw the first bulletin or email. I got something saying, check out Pwn.com. I went there, and it just said, input your email for um, a future beta testing of the site. And about a couple days into the, I guess, the opening, I got an email, and that's how I joined. And I've actually pretty much uh, ignored every other social networking site I've been on. What about you? Um, I'm trying to think. I think it was probably about mid-December. Um one of my friends, uh, she's also an active member on uh, Pwn.com, X Chromosome XX. A lot of you guys probably know her. Um, she spammed my bulletin, um, my little bulletin section on MySpace. I woke up one morning and all I saw was, hey, I need your email. Hey, I need your email. Hey, come join this awesome site. Hey, come join this awesome site. And I really didn't think much of it because a few weeks prior, she and a few friends had started a forum called Pwn Forum. And it was, it was, pretty, uh, it was pretty bland. There wasn't a lot going on in it. Um, but I was just tired of her spamming it. So I was like, you know what, here, here's my email. Send me a freaking email. Quit spamming my MySpace. I can't read the rest of my bulletin. (laughs) Um, you know, I joined up. I got her those points that she was talking about. Next thing I know, I clicked on the shout box and I don't think I've left since. (laughs) Yeah, definitely the shout box is definitely the, yeah, it's definitely the thing on the site that keeps everybody around. Um, for those that haven't gone to the shout box enough, once you do, you're not going to be able to leave once you get addicted to it. Definitely, it's the key to the site. And Yeah. The second you start meeting people on that shout box is, uh, I, I think it's the second that you're, t- you're sucked in. It's like an invisible chain that just ties you to the website. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, it's had its ups and downs with certain people coming in, but uh, once Andy, a.k.a. Pwned, the guy who started it all, Started uh, added the ignore feature. I mean, it's basically made the shout box how you want it to be, who you want to put up with. And uh, you know, and I'm glad that um, I think for the longest time people weren't. I know, I know him and him and a V and D weren't banning people, and I know that they finally have taken that step up. Because I mean, let's face it, gamers are jerks. Um, not all of them really want to socialize with people. Um, and I think that's kind of that's kind of too bad because you know the site's really about having fun and. And the problem is, a lot of them are these so-called four channers who forget that the whole point of four channers being anonymous, but on pwns you're not. So. Yeah. And you know what? I, I mean, it's not all bad four channers. I I myself am a slash B nerd. Um, yes, I'm a B tard. Everybody, <laughs> uh, I will admit it. Uh, I don't. I don't really admit it to the public because that will cause some chaos and destruction. Exactly. But um, you know, I mean, 4chan isn't all destructive. I mean, look what we did for Taze and Day. We went and trolled the heck out of his website, and next thing you know, he's doing commercials for Dr. Pepper. So, which I might add was awesome. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, you know, Pwn.com. It's a great place. It's it's still in beta. Um. Because I, I guess we're still setting it up, and I know it's hopefully going to get some nice new improvements here in a bit that you guys will be able to enjoy pretty soon. Yeah, because Andy's uh, actively been uh, campaigning people to check out the uh, new IM feature. He's had people check it out here and there. Um, I went into it. It was pretty cool. Just had some double posting when you talk. I mean, other people don't see it, but you see what you typed plus what they saw. Um, I know he's actively working on fixing that. 
And once it gets up, you're going to be able to go into your own chat room. So besides the shout box, you'll be able to chat to just the people you want to talk to. And I think I think that's finally a good feature because we're just getting so many people in the shout box now that, I mean, you really have to read fast <laughs> and scroll fast if you want to make sure that you don't miss any conversation. Because I think up to three three or four conversations I've seen at a time going on this in this shout box. Oh, I know. It's a little and... bit chaotic. So it would be nice to have a couple of other small rooms for those people that, you know, don't necessarily want to talk to everybody. Yeah, when you get up to 20 or 30 people in the shop box at once, it's just you hit refresh and you're scrolling down <laughs> a lot just to catch yeah. back up. <laughs> that but, reminds uh, me I of think... my old days of uh, WBS.net, which had the same <laughs> feature, but that was like 94, <laughs> 95. <laughs> I'm a little old when it comes to chatting on the net. <laughs> yeah, and I guess I'm a little bit I'm a little bit younger. I, I, the first thing I remember was uh, AOL Instant Messenger. That was my first chat feature. Wow. So. But I'm um, young and when it comes to when it comes to the <laughs> internet, I'm only 20 guys. <laughs> yeah, and I'm 28, so it says a lot. Yeah, don't like, don't like my pool, my pick fool you. I, I don't <laughs> just because I look 15 doesn't mean I'm 15. You know. Yeah. I'm in fact 20. So for all you pedophiles out there that we're hoping to talk to a 15-year-old, you know what? I'm sorry, guys, but I'm just too old for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another thing I like about this site is the games feature. How he, how it's basically come into effect where you can now add games to your profile, the games you play, the games you want, or the games you own. Which, if you, you go on my site, to play the games with you. And yeah, and if you go on the my profile it's going to take about a couple days to load with all the games i have on there <laughs> yeah i was uh, i was pretty lenient with a lot of my games i basically only had out of the ones that i really 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 like playing or that i'm playing at the moment um if i'd added all the games i've ever played i like g niger said it would probably take an eternity to load not to mention that i would have to take an eternity to go search every single game that wasn't listed yet um, yeah and um, that's the thing I like too is that people can add the games that aren't on there already. You could bet. It gets points. Uh, that's that's one one of the great things about Pwn.com is it's, it's a reward system. You know, I, I can't remember the last time MySpace you know gave me an Xbox 360 for posting. Yeah, I mean. Contests as well. Um, Pwn.com's got some seriously awesome contests and. Uh, I actually just clicked the contest page right now, which I haven't done in a while, and there is some really nice things on here right now. Yeah, the contest, I mean, current contests are for Devil May Cry 4, ControlFreak.com's uh, the, the analog Barracuda. stick, yeah, and the Razor Barracuda. For those of you PC gamers out there that uh, need a new sound card, um, <laughs> so this is a pretty good sound card. I mean, you don't, you don't necessarily need to spend this much money for one, but heck, if you can get one for free, I would take it in a hurry. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just trying to get it to get it, and then I'll resell it. <laughs> I hope Andy doesn't listen to that and make sure I don't win, but <laughs> I really don't have any use for it. But, well, uh, you know, I think I think the site has some great potential, and I'm really glad to be a part of it, um, beta, especially so early on to the beta. You know, there's a couple people that have been joining recently, and I suppose uh, the fact that I've been around a lot longer than some of these other people kind of kind of makes it fun because, you know, we get to show people around the site, hey, how do you do this? How do you do that? Hey, will you be my friend? And I still don't know how, like, all these people end up adding me. I won't post in the chat box or anything. And yeah. I, I tend to get a lot of friend requests on here that I wasn't expecting. Um, but uh, another thing on the site I like that they've added recently has been the um, addition of the arcade games. Oh, really? Uh, I haven't even checked that part. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are really cheap and cheesy, but some of them are actually a good time. Three foot ninja. Boom, boom. Bug in a wire. Snake yeah. as a Come on. I keep trying that boom, boom game, but it doesn't work. I suck at it. I can't figure out how to get get it to get the win. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and he's going to be changing that up soon as well. I think he's going to have a better layout of the arcade system. He was talking about. He did add the next page and the back page thing, which because before all the freaking arcade games were on one <laughs> long list. 
I can imagine that's a lot. We did that in arcade on one of my old websites, and there was about 800 games. Um, we eventually went and deleted a bunch, but still, <laughs> we had like 22 pages and no way to see them alphabetically. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, basically, um, I guess we should discuss on the future of Pwn here. Um, definitely looking forward to when the beta ends and goes fully public. And our points double. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, and the points double. For those who don't know, um, everybody who's been here since for the first month, basically all of December, is getting double points on all the points they've got. So if you've got 15,000 points right now, um, you're going to have 30,000 by the end. So every 1,000 points equals about a dollar. Um, so if you think about the systems like you want to get a game, you're going to need 60,000 points, 50,000 points, somewhere in around that range. Um, and some other things I'm looking forward to, like I said, the IM feature coming online perfectly. Oh. <laughs> I am feature is definitely going to be a great feature. Um, the shout box is supposed to get, I think, somewhat of a reworking, not too much, but well, I guess we'll see when it gets here. Andy's not giving away any information on the changes right now. Yeah, so uh, even even anything we, get, we know, guys, we just we can't tell you. It's on a need to know basis, and at this point in time, you guys don't need to know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was told when I was trying to find out how the layout was going to be for this podcast webpage. <laughs> and he just said, can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we guys, you know, we're coming to hear you, giving you a, a podcast, and we don't even know what our what our webpage is going to look like. So you guys are going to be just as surprised as we will be. <laughs> exactly. Um, but um, I guess, uh, you know, on that note, um, you know, podcast, uh we are, we are here to bring you guys some information and some updates and some things. And there's a couple things that G and I would like to talk to you guys about. Um, yeah, definitely. So I guess one of them is a, it's about a commercial for an upcoming game that G and was incredibly psyched about, uh, Lost Odyssey. Um, I will I have that this are, week. <laughs> yeah, and you know, odds are if you guys watch TV or you know watch game trailers online, or heck, even go on Gaia online, because I know that Lost Odyssey is uh, sponsoring Gaia right, uh, this month. Um, odds are you've seen the trailer um, for Lost Odyssey. Um, the music featured on it is White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane, and I found it a little interesting that they chose this <laughs> music. Um, <laughs> yeah, the first time I watched the commercial, I was kind of like, what the hell am I listening to? <laughs> Like, I kept expecting to hear, like, the chorus of it, and then it just never happened. But it was just weird. Like, it doesn't, to me, it does not fit with the game at all. Just... Well, I mean, it's one of the characters named Alice, because I know when, uh, in the lyrics, you know, when it says, go ask Alice, the girl with the glasses just kind of popped up on screen. And that is the only thing I can think about why they picked that song, because... No, there's nobody named Alice in the game. The main character's name is, uh, it's, it's... Came, I guess it's K A I M. I'm just gonna go with Came, is how you say it, or Kaim. Um, and it, the story doesn't even have to do with anything dealing with like an Alice in Wonderland type thing. It's like Where, Came. Like it, like drugs? <laughs> no, Came's an immortal who's lived for like a thousand years, and basically the whole game is spanning those thousand years and different parts of his memories and stuff. It's basically you're going through. Um, stories that have um, revolved around the generations of that he's taken part with and the loves, losses, conflicts in that world. So, should be an interesting game, but like I said, and you've said, the music is just... It is so random. What the hell? I mean, the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, I love this song. And I paid more attention to the song um, than the game itself. The second time, I was like, oh, well, this editing is pretty nice. The third time, I started remembering the lyrics to the song. And then it just struck me. <laughs> Why in the world would their publishers decide to make a promotional video using a song talking about psychedelic drugs? I mean, this song was a hit smash at Woodstock in the late 60s and uh, early 70s. Um, Jefferson Airplane is known for being um, a group that does that. They also some of their other hits that are uh, um, Somebody to Love, which I'm sure some of you kids may know, you may not know. Yeah. 
you may have heard it, you just don't know that's the name of it. Um, and it just really gets me asking why they were thinking that. I mean, if, if you actually listen to the song, basically it's just kind of doing a little walkthrough through Alice in Wonderland with a small little uh, footnotes of Through the Looking Glass. Both are uh, Lewis Carroll books. And these books were written in the 1800s. Yeah. Um, but Jefferson Airplane then went and sang a song about it in the 60s, kind of a psychedelic interpretation about Disney's, you know, well-off showing of drugs in the movie. Um, and it also talks about shrooms, it talks about hookahs and getting high, and pills <laughs> that make you big and pills that make you small. What does that have to do with an RPG? <laughs> uh, with this one, nothing. Exactly. I mean, at least, uh, like, like I said in my uh, in my blog um, earlier when I made the post uh, retaining this issue, Bioshock. Um, for those of you guys who might have remembered, released a series of commercials using "Beyond the Sea," uh, an amazing, amazing song by Bobby Darin, which is a lot older yep. than uh, that song. And um, it at least had something to do with Bioshock. Um, for those of you guys that have ever played it, or fans of it, or familiar with it. Um, it does have some ties to the game. So even though the commercial still seemed kind of random, only because I hadn't played it, um, you know, it was a great song and it had some ties, but Lost Odyssey just kind of really baffled me with this one. Um, yeah, um, I gotta agree. Um, but like you said, how um, Bioshock had a great music to it. Another commercial that did a really good job of it was the Gears of War commercial that featured... Uh, the remake of Tears for Fears song Mad World off the Donnie Jules, Darker soundtrack. Yeah. And Jules, that was a great song for the game, and it worked. But sometimes these publishers just don't seem to get it. <laughs> I mean, why? I don't see why you can't just use music from the actual game like Kingdom Hearts did when they used um, Japanese pop star Utada Hikaru, who actually did the opening theme song. At least it was from the game. And it makes sense. Well, like, uh, well, like again, you know, like I said in my blog, um, for those that might be confusing you, I, I do run a video game blog that, similar to a Kotaku that I usually update every once in a while. And um, like, like I wrote, you know, some kids like rap, some kids like rock, some kids like J-pop, some people hate Japanese music. And I think that a lot of these publishers are picking kind of this older or this neutral kind of music um to try to you know to appeal to everyone because it's not just the video game industry that's doing it car companies do it um jc penny companies like that do it um and i guess the video game industry finally picked up on this and started you know featuring featuring music that would be kind of neutral to the people that don't like either and get the people that know this music really excited because kids aren't the only people that play video games adult plays video games moms grandparents um you know you'd be surprised the age ranges of people who play these games and I do compliment some of these companies for noticing on it, but again, Lost Odyssey, I'm, I'm wondering what you guys were thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. We're not thinking too much. Um, I actually got to say, there's a if you do a search for video game commercials and you don't and you want to see the Lost Odyssey, I mean, you can go to YouTube, but there's also a site called Video Game Ads. I don't it's not videogameads.com, it's like gameads.gamepressure.com. But definitely just do a search and you'll find it. You can see that. I mean, you can see a lot of the ones we're talking about. Um, it's a really cool site. It has like 7,000 commercials. Um, a lot of them are not going to be U.S., so they got them from all over the world. And it's actually a pretty cool site to check out. Um, but uh, on that note of music, I mean... We also wanted to dis discuss was the rhythm games and the like effects they band, have. Rock band, <laughs> karaoke revolution, DDR. <laughs> yeah, dance dance revolution. Basically anything that Konami owns and or Beat Mania owns. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you know. I've been playing Dance Dance Revolution for come up on seven years, and with wow. that, I've pretty much played every game in between. I've played the drum games, I've played the singing games, I've played the keyboard games, the guitar games. I played Guitar Freaks, and this is a game that came out many years before Guitar Hero was even thought up of. Um, and after a while, when you start hearing these songs, your feet move, your hands move, <laughs> you pull out your invisible air guitar, and you start hitting the code, you know, the chords on expert mode. <laughs> and it really got me thinking, these games have really ruined music. <laughs> I, can't, I can't listen to some of these songs without thinking, 
oh my god, oh my god, star power, you know, and it, it ruins other songs too, because the other day I was singing some songs, and I got up like I was singing Karaoke Revolution, you know? Wow. Yeah, I must and, say that it's probably a good thing I suck at those games and don't play them too often, because that would not, <laughs> I don't know, I don't want my music being ruined like that. I couldn't imagine sitting there hitting like, the green, red, yellow buttons on my freaking, like, on a guitar while I'm trying to listen to a song, and I'm just sitting on the couch. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, at first I was really excited that, like, you know, Bad Religion had infected um, on a on their first, on first Guitar Hero, and that's one of my favorite Bad Religion songs. Um, and so I was really excited, and I played it like crazy. But, you know, <laughs> then I listened to it at home, and instead of, you know, remembering the music video or anything else in between... I, I completely remember, oh, here comes the screen, you know, I'll click X5, let's do star power, come on, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't lose now, and it just really starts to ruin, ruin, the, ruin the songs, I, I mean, I, I know it's, it's great for the band, band developers, and it's great for the people that really like to play these games, I'm not bashing the games, I'm just saying at the same, at the same, same time, I really just can't view them the same way anymore. Yeah, I gotta say, you know, since I don't play them that often, but when I talk about certain songs, whether like surprisingly enough, this was one thing that kind of surprised me when I was at uh, a Dave and Buster's. Um, I tried the Pump It Up game, and it's actual like Korean pop music, Korean hip hop. And I started talking to people after, and I'd be talking about music, and they're like, "Oh, that's the song from this game. That's the song from this game." I'm like, "I'm not talking about the game." <laughs> And that's like where I've seen it on that end. I've seen it like that bothers me a lot because I can't talk to somebody that plays those games about a song without them talking about what they've done and how they dance to it. And yeah, half well, the time I, I want to be like, I don't care. About that. Um, I am in no way or shape or form a wow, a wow nerd. In fact, you know, for some of you guys, I apologize if this disappoints you. But I actually despise wow because if I haven't seen some of my friends in a few years because of it. Um. <laughs> There's people I used to hang out with every day. Hey, you want to go play some Counter-Strike? Hey, you want to go to the park? Hey, you want to go do this? Yeah, sure. Hey, do you want to get this? No, I've got a raid with my guild tonight. And uh, it's like a little bit bummed out. Being you know, be, being an active member in the gaming industry, I have to know about it. Um, and my friends always send me videos about WoW stuff. And the other day, somebody sent me um, a video where I guess some of the WoW characters were doing their dances. And he's doing the Macarena. Wow. And anybody who's probably gone to a bar mitzvah or a school dance or is over the age of 18, for sure, knows what the Macarena is. Uh, unfortunately, I'm yes. I'm at this YouTube video, and people are like, oh, this is the dance of that one character. This is that dance, you know, like they had no idea what the Macarena was and that WoW actually didn't create this dance. Yeah, I've seen people do that with the Napoleon dance or the Britney Spears toxic dance. <laughs> it's like, come on. And it's, it's just crazy how much influence, you know, some video games have on some people. Um, it's, it's, it's crazy. <laughs> it also I think, shows... I think they're starting to educate kids and... Yeah, it also shows, like, how far, though, that video games have come. Where that people actually are learning about other things that a lot of people know about just through the games. Yeah. So... You know, I mean, I know a lot of people have, uh... As lame and terrible as it sounds, um, a lot of people have learned other languages from video games and watching anime. And although at times a lot of us kind of despise some of the uh, the crazy happy otakus, um, at the same time, you know, it's it's education. Kids are learning to speak other languages. Um, I can't tell you how annoying it is to go to an animation uh, an animation convention or a comic con and hear somebody go, you know, kawaii, like at the top of their lungs, when they obviously don't know any other Japanese words. But at the same time. You know, it's the games that taught them some of these other languages, which I do applaud. And I also will have to, you know, put out there that I am not innocent of saying kawaii and segwa. <laughs> I say a lot of those words sometimes, but over the years I realized how annoying it was to my Japanese friends when I stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I tend, to, I tend to say a lot in Korean to my friends, but they get really annoyed. Yeah, I, I do the same but as well. Like, um, I'm also fluent in sign language, and sometimes if somebody brings up the topic of sign language, I automatically flip on a switch that says, okay, translation time, and I will talk in sign at the same time without noticing it. So, <laughs> I definitely got to see crazy. that. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's crazy how much uh, technology influences really come, especially in video games. Um, 
and uh, I guess you know, with on that topic, you know, with with all the uh, the evolution of the gaming and the yeah, increasing like... graphics and consoles, is the pricing. Um, oh man, I, I rock just... bands. Just about two hundred dollars. That's that's enough for me to eat for a month. I know, and people went out and bought the whole set just for themselves. Nobody else to play with them, just for themselves. And, yeah, and I can't I'm see sorry, spending sorry. all that. <laughs> um, I've heard a couple people like already replacing their guitars and their drums. And well, there's I mean, one guy on the site, you know. I haven't had any problems with it, but at the same time, that kind of makes me a little afraid to spend almost two hundred dollars. Yeah, game. well, Ghetto Ninja from uh, Pwn dot com. He said that he got his guitar back fixed, and what do you know what happens next? One of the drums doesn't work. Now he's writing to EA because it says you can't take it back to the stores. You have to go to EA. And he wants his money back at this point. I mean, you spent $180, for, and you can't even play it. And it's only been out for like a month and a half, two months. Yeah, it came out right before Christmas. Yeah, and it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, didn't some of the Guitar Heroes have problems? I mean, Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero controllers have problems as well? Um, yeah, a couple of Guitar Hero con- controllers did have um, some problems. Actually, a couple with each console. I know the 360, when they completely revised the shape at first, was having some troubles as well. Yeah. Uh, but, like, you know, when I, I got to play Rock Band at CPL, um, it's right, right, right when Rock Band came out, or possibly even before, I really can't remember. Um, and it was really fun and really competitive. And then I got to play it again at Christmas with uh, my boyfriend <laughs> and I went up to visit his family in Missouri. And, I mean, it was me, him, his younger brother, who's 18, his, uh, his sister, she's and her boyfriend, they're in their 20s, and his parents, who are, um, I think, 52. And yeah. all of us, all of us were playing rock band until, like, 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's definitely a good family you know, oriented game. It's great for people. But when you're sitting at home by yourself, I just really can't imagine spending that much money. I almost bought it, and then I realized I don't really have that many friends here in Memphis. Uh, hmm. I basically moved here to be with my boyfriend and to go to school, but at the same time, outside of school, nobody really hangs out with me. So yeah. working with an arm and a leg just seemed really crazy for a game. Yeah, it's, it's the same with me. Like, um, I hang out with people here and there, but not at the house normally. Normally I'm out when I'm hanging out with people, so having it in my house is kind of like worthless. Why am I spending 180 bucks for the once every three months somebody might come by? Exactly. <laughs> like that's the whole reason I bought a Wii um, because people used to always come over and we'd have a whole bunch of we'd have a whole bunch of fun. And uh, hold on a second. Sorry. Uh, speaking of boyfriend, um, <laughs> I'm currently sitting right next to him right now, and he is yelling at me. So. <laughs> okay, you can get up on yourself and turn on the light, honey. So, all right, guys, I apologize for that inter- <laughs> interruption, but that just tells you how human I am. Um, <laughs> I can't even remember what I was talking about. Nitro, you want to take over for me real quick while I go um, turn on the light for my boyfriend? <laughs> all right, that's no problem. Um, basically, other pricing issues that I feel we have are anything that uses some type of controller. An extra controller, I should say, or a special controller. Um, you've got DDR. You need to get a dance pad. Depending on the dance pad you need to get, you're spending from an extra 20 bucks to an extra $100 if you get the hard plastic or hard wood, I think is even more. Um, then you got games like Time Crisis that come out for $80, and they refuse to sell the, control, the controllers by itself. Um, so you pretty much have to order a controller from Japan. Um, other than that, I just even the Guitar Hero games at a hundred bucks for 360, it's like 90 for PS2. It's just a ridiculous amount of money. Yeah, and there's no sign that um, some of the prices in video games are going to go down for some of these. Uh, yeah. I do know for a fact that a couple of game developers are seeing um, this pattern and noticing that a lot of people really don't care about some of the graphics, and I know for a fact that a couple of games are actually working on um, selling their games for $35 when they come out, as opposed to 50 and 60 Well, look at Tomb Raider Anniversary. Um, it came out for the 360 after being out on the PS2. They could have easily put it out for $60. 
but they put it out for 40. I mean, that's what was, it was like, okay, we didn't do a full graphical upgrade, so we're not going to give you $60. We're not going to make you pay $60. So here's a $40 game, which was yeah. smart. Or like, you know, Valve, they'll, uh, they'll, they, they actually sell their games pretty cheap for what they are because you can buy them, you can buy a whole bunch at once and pay $50, or you can buy them in small amounts like Portal and Team Fortress 2 and, and Counter-Strike and all this stuff. I mean, these games are only $20, $25, 15 It really depends on what you buy, and... Um, you know, they also cut out some of the cost of having to ship a game to the store and giving yeah. you a CD in your box, and that's, well, that's something really amazing that Valve has been doing for the gaming industry these past few years, especially with the, yeah. uh, the release of Steam. Well, the orange box was also, I mean, for people who like to own something, was probably the best bet for your money this this Definitely. past year. I mean, you get what? the only game I did not regret buying. Um, um, I, I know they try to say five games. Truthfully, it's just Half-Life and Expansions, and then you get... Team Fortress 2 and um, Portal. and Portal, but even at three games for fifty dollars, and then you get two expansion add-ons, you can't you can't beat that price. I know I haven't played it yet. Countless mods of Half Life 2 <laughs> that will keep you busy for probably yeah. the rest of your life. Yeah, if you're a PC gamer, people like me well, on yeah. the console, we don't have that choice. Um, I know. Uh, I'm getting it in the mail the next couple weeks from a trading site. So. Oh, so you finally got it. Uh, not yet. I've got I've gotten it to where somebody accepted the trade, but it's got to come in. Well, that's good that Lisa accepted your trade. Um, yeah. I guess uh, you know. On that note, with uh, with Orange Box, um, there's a what was what is it? Uh, the other thing I like about a Steam. I'm sorry, you know, I'm sitting here whoring Valve, but um, that's fine. If you if you do you know buy computer games through Valve and stuff, which is why I think it's a perk of buying it for the PC as opposed to a console, is that Valve is constantly coming up with patches and releases and updates. And um, what Valve really does for the consumer is is pretty amazing. They've they've installed um, uh, scripts in their game um, that actually allow subtitles, and because of that, Valve is um, Valve's Orange Box is the only game to get an A rating. Um, by the Deaf Gamers Association. Um, and recently, they also installed Spanish audio for Portal and Team Fortress 2. Wow. Um, so if any of you PC gamers out there are more fluent in Spanish or don't really know any English, um, you know, that's that's something great for you. You can go to Valve's website, you can download that patch, and all you have to do is execute it, and it will turn your audio into Spanish. Um, just in case you guys are having a little little bit of trouble understanding what GLaDOS may be saying when you're running around the test chambers. Um, you know, um, EA has done that too, in a way. Not just for every game, but uh, this year they put Madden 08, 08 out in full Spanish. It's called Madden 08 uh, Espanol. Um, so I guess they're definitely trying to reach out to people who normally wouldn't understand what's going on in the game. And, uh, you know, I applaud that. Um, I'm originally from Texas. I were, um, I lived in Dallas, and I actually worked at a couple of GameStops. Um, I actually worked at the original GameStop, the first one that ever existed. It was called 1601, but really it was Store One. Um, and very few of our customers that came in actually speak, uh, spoke any English. And it got to the point where all of our workers um, that did speak English had to leave or got in trouble with the cops, um, a lot of things that I'm really not allowed to get into. Um, but uh, people would come in and they would try to ask us for games and we'd spend 20 minutes trying to figure out which game it was and how to sell it for them. So yeah. there's off obviously a really high demand for um, for certain video games not in English. Um, FIFA definitely won. Uh, FIFA 08, FIFA 07, those were two games we yeah. could never keep on the shelf. Uh, um, definitely. The soccer is definitely a sport that's well liked about anybody who's not from the U.S. From America. <laughs> well, you know, I, I'm obsessed with soccer. Um, I love the World Cup. So the FIFA games, I think, are really amazing, especially, yeah, for those people that are not necessarily, you know, all American, completely English speaking. I think that's great. It's great that, you know, EA comes out with those games. Um I think it's great what the what, what the developers are really starting to noticing, um, specific people that are buying the video games and not necessarily looking at a generalization. Uh, yeah. And I and I do applaud that they actually do take the time to care, um, 
about about the people that are buying their video games. Like again, you know, Valve released the subtitles for the deaf people. Um, there's a decent amount of deaf people in America and you know all over the world, but maybe not necessarily who play who are gamers. So um, just all the options that are out there for users to make it easier for them. You know, I I applaud the game developers for keeping them in mind. Yeah, it's definitely nice to see them try um try other things and branch out to other people because um they don't do it enough in my opinion they don't try to get i mean it doesn't make sense to me because it's extra money in their pocket i mean for just a little effort whether it is subtitles and games that's why a lot of the role-playing games work well for um i know deaf people because lately it's been you can have japanese audio with english subtitles they do dual audio so if you do dual audio you automatically have subtitles in the game uh, Blue Dragon was one of them. I think the only time that that's one of my favorite Japanese yeah. games. Yeah, I know. Um, when I was reading that uh, Deaf Gamer site, the review, um, they were talking about Blue Dragon. The only issue they had was you couldn't hear the monsters popping up and detecting you. Mm-hmm. If they were on screen, yeah, you could see the. Uh, it says detected, but normally you would you wouldn't know. But. And, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'm just saying, like, with that, I also read up on it that uh, subwoofers um, actually do help uh, deaf gamers. Um, if game developers kind of program that a whole bunch of bass when a monster might be coming, um, you know, a deaf person's going to be able to feel that bass and just kind of hear the hear a little bit of the vibrations. Cause people who are deaf, they're not stone deaf. They can, hear, yeah. they, can hear, they can hear certain sounds and things, but they just can't always make out dialogue. But even if you don't do it for a subwoofer or bass, you could put it into... The, Besides the PS3, of course, you could put it into a rumble. Yeah. Um, I mean, and the PS3 will have that soon. So, but you could put a more rumble in there as they get closer. Just have it shake a little. Mm-hmm. And, Which I think these are something that you know developers really should look into because I mean, um, you know, I'm I kind of was a little bit of part of the deaf community. Uh, you know, I had an ex boyfriend whose family was you know their his family was deaf, and so I kind of grew up around it a little bit and. You really do see how much it lets people down when they can't enjoy some of these things, and that some of the developers don't really care. Um, so it's just it's really nice to see that people are you know making progress and you know developing these games for everybody to enjoy. Exactly. Yeah, and um, just want to since we're I mean we got to give uh, the new releases that are coming out this week. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> we one we've talked about. Um, Lost Odyssey was one of them. Uh, the role-playing game, the new role-playing game from Miss Walker Studios. Dumb, basically, the studios was created by the guy. I can't remember his name right now. It's going to drive me crazy. If, <laughs> was um, the guy who first worked on, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Final Fantasy. Excuse me. Kind of having a brain fart here. <laughs> first worked on Final Fantasy, and now he started up. Um, and it, even just like with Blue Dragon, it has the composer Nobuo Uematsu, who do, did all the old Final Fantasy music that everybody knows and loves. And um, definitely looking forward to that one. In the upcoming weeks, I'll tell you guys how it is, as it should be, and by Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> um, I really can't think of many other releases right now. I'm trying to think what else is coming out this week. Um, got any ideas there, Clover? Um, not really. All the all the releases I'm looking forward to, because um, I am a PC gamer. Um, I don't get as excited as often as console gamers. Um, uh, most of the releases I'm looking forward to are coming out later this uh, this year. But uh, I, I'm sure I'm sure there's plenty of awesome titles that are coming out this week and next week. I'm just probably not completely fully aware. Um. I, I do, uh, however, you know, if you want to name our, our top five games for... Well, actually, year. I just found the list of the games coming out this week, so... Okay. I guess we should go over that real quick. Um, For the 360 fans, you have Conflict Denied Ops, which is also... Well, I should say that's for all systems, PC, 360, and PS3. And when I say all systems, I mean next-gen. I don't consider Wii next-gen. I know I'll piss off a lot of fanboys, <laughs> but the graphics don't prove to me that it's next-gen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess the I guess the technology is play on the Wii. Yeah. Because of the way the Wii is set up. Um, yeah. I mean, you have uh, Penumbra, Black Plague, which is coming out for the PC. 
you got Jumper. I guess it's based on the movie. I'm sure that's going to be a wonderful game. <laughs> this is coming out for 360, Wii, and PS2. You got Dungeon Explorer on the PSP and DS, another role-playing game. Um, Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, another uh, medieval role-playing game, as if there's not enough of those things running around. <laughs> And it looks like The Innocent Life of Futuristic Harvest Moon, which was originally released on the PSP, is coming out with a special edition for the PS2 this week. And if anybody is into horse, horses, my horse in me is coming out on the PC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if you're really into that stuff, go for it. I doubt yeah, there's I anybody out little, there. little kid game. It just, it just kind of all of a sudden reminded me of uh, Nintendo DS horses. Yeah. I'm sure there's nobody listening to this podcast that's waiting for that. <laughs> well, uh, you know, in, in future weeks, um, Smash Brothers Brawl, as most of you guys know, was delayed. Um, it's mm. due to it's let's see the release date is Sunday, March 9th. On now, a Sunday? I I, yeah, I don't know if that's when they're going to start shipping it, when it's going to reach the stores, how that's going to work. <laughs> but according to SmashBrothers.com, it's set to release Sunday, March 9th. Um, and for those that are wondering about the game, you may want to make sure that your Wii is completely dust and smoke free. As in Japan, people have had to send their Wiis into Nintendo for what Nintendo calls uh, user created problems. Not the problem that this is the only game that's ever been affected, and it's the first game they've ever put on dual layer. <laughs> um. But a lot of people have, ha- have been having problems with uh, Smash Brothers playing in Japan. So we'll see if that problem extends to the U.S. Well, that's also I think they might have uh, postponed the date a little bit because there were some problems um, in Japan. So, but uh, yeah, if you guys are really hardcore, you know, Smash Brothers Brawl fans, you can you can visit their website. It's got a ton of updates. They got a ton of uh, videos of all of all the levels and all the characters playing and doing their specials. So if you really just can't wait any longer, you know, visit their website, uh, smashbrothers.com. Um, it allows you to pick your language. Uh, another good uh, release for the Wii um, in March is going to be uh, House of the Dead 2 or 3 Returns, which is basically um, the, the uh, arcade game itself released for the Wii. Um, <laughs> I think it's about time that they've done this. I am a huge fan of light series games um, in the arcades. Uh, like I said, you know, I've been playing Dance Dance Revolution for almost seven years now, so obviously I've grown up in an arcade. Um, and it's just, it's so great to finally see this. I think if this, uh, if this game does well, then hopefully some, some more arcade titles, um, of that genre will be released soon for the Wii. Um, and to my knowledge, House of the Dead 2 or 3 Returns is actually not going to cost that much. It's probably going to be in the same range as Resident Evil 4. Um, so look forward to that. That's supposed to be coming out March 18th, last time I checked, um. The date may have been postponed or pushed forward. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> um, you can probably check GameStop.com or anything of that sort to see uh, when it will be in your stores. Yeah. So, um, did you want to go over the top five uh, releases that um, were most anticipated in this year? Well, I, I'm sure both of our top fives are different. So, if you want to start with yours, I already named two of mine. <laughs> um, my number one this year is the same as it has been every year for the past ten years. Like I said earlier, um. Duke Nukem Forever. Yeah, I've been waiting for that game since 97, and I'm going to continue saying that it's going to happen. I refuse to be a pessimist like everybody else out on the internet. <laughs> I believe it will come out this year. As... And you know, I did too. It's also the number one on my list. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you guys can kind of tell um, by our name, we are, we are paying homage to Duke Nukem, and... Uh, yep. We are, we're not going to let it die. We are going to mention this every podcast until they finally give up and hopefully release it eventually. Exactly. Um, what, what's your number two? <laughs> My number two is the game uh, actually being released this week, which is Lost Odyssey. Um, I guess I'll include that since it's not out yet. And who knows, there's been worse uh, pushbacks at the last second. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's definitely my number two. Uh, my number two would have to be Left 4 Dead. Uh, definitely an amazing game. I cannot wait for Valve.com, Valve Softwares, everything. Valve, I pretty much whore 
every single day and looks <laughs> for updates on this game. Um, for anybody else that might be incredibly obsessed with this as me, or anybody else, you know, I uh, I do have to say that I, I am sharing your pain and that this only comes out at the end of the month. I, I really hope to get on beta for this, but I doubt it will probably happen. Um, for those of you guys who are not familiar with Left 4 Dead, it's a uh, Valve's newest and only project for 2008. Um, it's set to release at the end of this uh, at the end of the summer, hopefully. And basically, it's um, four survivors are left in the zombie-infested uh, world, and you know they've got to they've got to fight their way out. There's different maps where there's a start point and end point, and your goal is to get to the end point. Um, and basically, what you're doing is you're fighting somebody who controls zombies and you know, there's there's artificial intelligence, or you can do multiplayer where somebody will control the zombies for them. There's different types of zombies that can be hid into the different map. And I think the wonderful uh, one of wonderful things about this game is the artificial intelligence itself. Um, you can run through one map and know where all the zombies are, and then you can run through it again the second time, and the zombies won't be there. They'll be somewhere else. So it really gets you thinking. And it gets you paying attention more to the game. It's it's not like Counter Strike where somebody might run down mid every single time to the point where you just start flashbanging mid. Um, yeah. And the graphics, the graphics look amazing. For anybody who's a huge fan of the Half Life Two graphics, um, wait till you see Left 4 Dead. You were just you're gonna be amazed. Your jaw is gonna drop. I seriously can't wait for this de- uh, for this for this to come out. <laughs> so. Well, on the um, my number three game this year is definitely Saints Row 2. For anybody that knows me, I think Saints Row 1 was probably the best sandbox style game to ever come out. It was even better than GTA with the fact that everything you did stayed with the criminal mindset. There was no ambulance missions, no fire truck missions, none of that BS. Um, you, everything was criminal. And um, I guess spoiler alert... Um, <laughs> At the end cover of the yours. first one... Cover yours right now. Take off your headphones. <laughs> exactly. Um, the first one, at the end of the first one, you are on a boat with a politician. It explodes. Um, so to start off the second one, you're in a hospital, and you have a choice of staying as a as a male character or changing your sex. <laughs> and... Um, the fu- funny part about this, and the reason why they did this, they wanted to continue the story, but people kept saying they wanted to be able to create a female character. So this was their way of throwing it in there, and it also deals with the humor that Saints Row 1 had. And if we're lucky, they'll keep the same great voice acting they had in the first one. They had some stars, but at the same time, it was very well done. Like, David Carradine was in there, you had... Um, uh, Tia Carrera. Um, unfortunately, both both of them died in the first one. <laughs> but um, they're it's just going to be a great game, and I can't wait. And they're now saying that it's going to be online co-op for the main story. So that's definitely my number three. Uh, my number three is probably actually Smash Brothers Brawl. Um, I'm more interested in how it's going to turn out than necessarily playing it. I, I really just want another another reason to dust off and bring out my Wii. Um, and like you said, you know, with, with Japan, I, I'm probably gonna have to do some serious dusting to make sure that it plays. <laughs> um, and I guess that brings me, uh, on to number four, still with the Wii, House of the Dead 2 or 3 Returns. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, that's one of my biggest things I'm waiting for. Uh, that's my number four. Yeah, I gotta go with, uh, Infinite Undiscovery. Um... If anyone's been on the Xbox Live Marketplace and seen the trailer on there, it's basically the first Square Enix game that's not Final Fantasy XI to hit a <laughs> uh, Microsoft console. So I'm just like, I saw the trailer and it looks awesome. The graphics look great. The characters look interesting. Even though the name is kind of odd, Infinite Undiscovery, I mean, it's just kind of like, what the hell were you thinking when you named it? But... It looks to be a pretty interesting role-playing game, and I'm definitely can't wait for it to come out. So, what's what about your number five? What's your number five? Yeah, my number five is actually still undecided. Um, I guess because I really tried to focus on being a hardcore gamer this year, I don't want to. I don't want to play too many games. Um, but uh, I don't know. I I really 
in my mind, uh, I'm basically just waiting for Xbox 360 games to come out on the PC. Um, so if you guys have noticed, Gears of War, you know, Viva Pinata, Bioshock, all of those games, after about a year of being out, eventually came out for the PC and made it where I didn't have to fork out an arm and a leg for a 360. <laughs> um, because I just, one, I can't afford one, too. If it breaks, I can't afford to fix it, you know? Let alone affording the game. So, I'm, if anything, I'm really waiting to see if they ever release Beautiful Katamari for the PC. <laughs> because I am so bummed that I can't play it. I am a huge fan of the Katamari series, and when it was released, that it wasn't going to be on the Wii or the PlayStation 2. I, I almost broke down in tears. Um, well, you need to buy a console. <laughs> Well, you know what? I, I've got I've got a Genesis. I've got a PlayStation Two. I've got a Wii. I, I'm pretty set off for consoles. I, I, well, you, you know, can play Katamari on PlayStation Two. Well, yeah, but I can't play the new one. It's, it's the same game as every other game. No, it looks prettier and it's high definition. <laughs> and I guess the main reason I really want to play it is it has multiplayer online, and it's the first time they've ever done that with a Katamari game. Interesting. And I really want to be able to get online and play people, but since I don't have Xbox Live, it really, <laughs> really kind of makes it hard to do. Xbox Live for the win. <laughs> um, but on my f- my uh, fifth game, most anticipated game, um, as much as I am anticipating Left 4 Dead 2, but more for the 360, um, I had to go with Crisis Core, um, Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Um, I downloaded the Japanese version to my PSP and played it, and I I really enjoyed it. But even though I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on, <laughs> it was just cool to check it out to see what was coming. And that comes out next month as well in March, as a lot of the other games we discussed. So definitely looking forward to that game. And it's supposed to be like a prequel to the Final Fantasy VII on the PS1. So see how that goes. Should be pretty good. I guess that's the top five uh, anticipated from yours truly and Miss Clover. <laughs> and uh, don't don't expect it to change too much as the weeks come by. I mean, if you know when news comes that some game's gonna suck or some game's gonna be better, I think some of the numbers might shift around. But for the most part, until some of these games start coming out, I don't think our top five is gonna change too much. Um, no, definitely not. I mean, so once we're uh, forward to falling off my top five pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, next as the next. Uh, program lost odyssey will already be out so i'll be adding another title to that top five (laughs) so and i'll discuss that when that time comes um just want to let everybody know we tried to get uh an interview with andy um schedules are really messed up gonna try to do it on a weekend if i can as he's three hours behind me (laughs) so when he gets home from work i'm it's already time for me to crash he gets home after seven and I'm usually in bed by 10 o'clock my time, so as I have to be up at 4, 4.30 in the morning to go to work. So look forward to that. We're also going to be adding a segment where we interview active members of Pwned and active, I should say, gaming members, not people who just are there to socialize everything up. We actually want to talk to gamers on there, whether they be pro or just people like me. I'm not a pro gamer, but I'm a hardcore gamer on the console market and all that. So we definitely want to get that involved. And we hope that it wasn't too bad of a first show for everybody. <laughs> yeah, we kind of we kind of winged it a little bit. Um, yeah, and I do apologize about that slight interruption. Um, <laughs> it gets really dark in our house right around 5, 5.30. And uh, my boyfriend was too lazy to stand up and turn the lights on himself because he was too busy playing Quake 3. And he figured <laughs> that it was my duty to stand up and stop what I was doing and turn the lights on. Man, um, he took you away from your did. kitchen duties? You know what? <laughs> you know what? We always joke, um, and I do have a lot of fun with this, um, that my PC, my bed, and pretty much everything else that involved with me is in the kitchen because that's where I belong. And not only, you know, I like to be in the kitchen, <laughs> but, uh, you know, being a girl gamer, I do get a lot of that a lot, and I, I like to play around with it. I don't I don't really take offense to any of the sexist jokes. Um because I realize that guys are assholes, especially gamers. So if I find that playing around with them, you know, oh yeah, you know, my kitchen is so huge, I've got everything in here. You know, yeah, it, just, it, it really look. it really breaks the ice and helps helps people to get along with me. So. Yeah, I gotta say, you know, I find that uh, normally 
um, girl gamers are probably more mature than uh, male gamers. And I get really tired of the Halo 3 um, people because I get called Have freaking... Drops and they're screaming at the top of their lungs and you can't even tell what they're saying because they're screaming oh. so loud and all you hear is static. It's, actually, I think all you really hear is like gay, homo. <laughs> Hey, what's I mean, up, you know all these terrible names that you don't want to hear, and yeah. they're using them. Uh, and they're usually they're, fourteen. Yeah, they're always it's always fourteen. Let me tell you, I play Counter Strike, and there's certain servers that every time I go in, you know, people are like, "Are oh, you a thirteen year old boy?" No, I'm a girl. So instantly, <laughs> all the thirteen year old boys are still assuming that I'm a thirteen year old girl. Yep. And I get hit on, like <laughs> there's no tomorrow. Clover, will you marry me? Or I guess I should say DM Cake Female. So I get called either Cake or Female. And they're like, will you marry me? Are you really a girl? Well, why, are you, why aren't you in the kitchen? You know, the older the older members, yeah. they will play around with me. Because they realize that I'm, I am older and I'm a little bit more mature. Like uh, yesterday we yep. had a, we had a, you know, uh, just your mama jokes um, turned into um, everybody singing Manumana. Uh, I think everybody that was singing Manumana <laughs> was probably the age of 20 and older. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and, um, oh, that's one thing, speaking of girls in gaming. want to do, yeah, I know some of the guys might be jealous. That's just the fact that I'm a co-host here. Um, <laughs> gonna have a, a time when we get, like, um, not just Clover, but one or two other girl gamers on here just to discuss how, um, how they relate in gaming. And I don't want to do it to the fact where we're basically i don't want to blow it up to where it's like i'm doing it because of the that they are girls and i'm trying to make it like a sex thing where we're playing them up like that now it's more to see where they stand in the gaming market the gaming industry even in pro gaming because there's still a problem with it all um clover has written about it yeah (laughs) many many times i'm I'm an ex uh, (laughs) member of an all-female clan um, and I guess to cause a little bit less drama, I'm not going to mention the clan's name. Uh, those of you guys know me personally know what, what, know what clan it is. And I left because some three of these, letters. Yeah, three letters. Some <laughs> of these, uh, so some of the, some of these clans just still don't know how to treat girl gaming, and they talk about how they want change and how girls shouldn't be treated differently, but then they actively seek to be treated differently. And mm. they want to be appreciated for being women and not for being gamers. Um, yeah. Like uh, my good friend Angel Muno, uh, Munoz once told me, uh, when I asked him for advice for girl gamers, he told me, be a gamer first and a girl second. And, I mean, some of you guys may find that offensive, the way it sounds, but really it's true. I mean, we're video gamers, we're playing gamers, you know, we're not here talking about our race, our sex, and our age. We're, we're gamers. So, you know, be a gamer first, focus on your skill, um, and that's what's going to get you far. And I think that's what a lot of these girls probably need to start paying a little bit more attention to, because if you really want to be taken seriously, you should be taken seriously for a gamer, not because you have boobs. Yeah, well, we'll definitely be covering that in the later ones. Um, Hopefully we can get uh, people with both sides of the issue, how they feel. I'd like to get somebody who wants to see... The um, I guess the uh, sex side of it, um, blown up, and the ones who want it just to remain as just gaming. Hopefully, we can get both sides of that later on in an upcoming show. Yeah, and hopefully, maybe we can see if I can get my friends from uh, GameGirl.com see if they want to do a few interviews with us. Uh, definitely be nice. Yeah, definitely look out for some interviews. Um, gonna have uh. Hopefully in the future also some conventions. I would like, even if it's just an anime convention, going out, um, doing some correspondence out there and report back of what was going on and stuff like that. I know I got uh, Otakon here in Baltimore area, and, and there's a few others in Virginia. In Dallas, uh, which I'm hopefully attending this year. When is that? Um, at the very end of March. I think it's like March 29th this year. Um, hmm. It's usually always the first weekend of June. So the first weekend of June falls on the first day that it's going to be even. Um, and that's in Dallas, Texas, um, for anybody interested. Uh, because Dallas is my home, usually when any time there's a, uh, a convention or something, I will drive back down for that. It's only six hours. So uh, look forward to uh, hearing me probably cover the Underground Gaming Series and um, uh, QuakeCon, CPL, and quite possibly um, MLG as well this year. 
All right, cool, cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, I might have to travel a bit this year and make some of those things. Uh, see, Akon is May 30th to June 1st. Damn, I think I'm actually working that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> definitely be cool because I know that's one of the bigger ones. Um, yeah, you basically got Akon, you've got Otakon. Convention in, the, in America. Yeah. It's actually started in the 70s, to my knowledge. So. Wow. But, yeah, uh, I know yeah, you have. Uh, uh, Akon is the largest in the South. You got the East is Otakon, and of course, everybody knows Anime Expo yeah. out in California, which has become the the event to attend. <laughs> <laughs> which is crazy, considering yeah, like you said, Akon is not is the first, but it's those Californians, I swear. <laughs> uh, don't don't flame me. I was just joking there. Well, so. you know what? It's because they're really <laughs> close to Japan, and so I know they've got you know a, a lot of hot Asians Japan, out there. I mean, a lot of Asians out there. Rather fly to <laughs> California than fly to Texas. Yeah, true. Uh, but uh, yeah, I guess you know. On that note, uh, yeah. I, think this was, I think this was a good podcast. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, had some uh, things here. I know you could hear stuff in my background. Uh, <laughs> you could probably hear my boyfriend yelling at me in my background. Uh, yeah. That little awkward silence that followed with it. <laughs> but yeah, things will definitely uh, get better as it goes on. I'll probably be moving the podcast to my office room. I just really need to clean. <laughs> I've been lazy uh, I wish about I that. Could move, but my desk is stationed right next to the window. And uh, <laughs> for those who might hear ambulances, I live across Target House, which is a uh, part of St. Jude Hospital. So please bear with me. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and, you know, if you guys have anything that you'd like to hear, some future topics, some suggestions for us, um, if you want to make fun of my stuttering, you know, any anything <laughs> above. That wasn't that you bad, don't wanna, worry. You want to share plans of world domination? I would love to hear it, because I really, and I mean, I really want to know what you guys hear, uh, think, you know. Yeah, I also want to say, <laughs> if uh, somebody wants to be one of the people we interview as one of the active gamers on the site, um, just tell us, let us know, and we'll figure out when we can fit you in, or if we can fit you in, and... Just Don't make sure be mad. You have a, a working microphone and uh, Skype. <laughs> yeah, and Skype on your PC. Um, we need to make sure that we hear you. Uh, we can and that you have a good connection. Yeah, and you have a good connection. Uh, the other day, my internet was kicking me off every ten minutes. So, you know, we'd really, really hate to have to make those rules out there. But we just want, again, we want to make sure that everybody out there gets the great, the greatest quality podcast <laughs> that we can really deliver. Yep. So, even well, if you and I are the biggest nubs ever. <laughs> yeah, I definitely got to say I enjoyed this podcast. So, I did too, and, I, and you know what? I hope all you guys out there in Cyberland enjoyed it as well. Yep, and I got to say, uh, we'll see y'all next time. Um, I was going to try to set a schedule, but I think it's better if we just record as we're ready to record. <laughs> and uh, pretty soon, um, ex- you know, again, expect a. A new uh, a new website kind of for us as, as part of Pwn dot com. Uh, expect a couple new features where you guys will be able to interact with us more, and uh, hopefully pretty soon we'll start.